My New Year's resolution for 2012 was to get in shape again. After my first kid was born, I had lost my athletic interest, but had every intention on getting it back. I started running four days a week with my friend Hannah, who was a great runner and motivator. We would run after work five to 10 kilometers, usually favoring the forest trails. It's the kind of trail that has lighting in the darker months of the year, so you could run there really anytime. Once you turn on the lights, you have 45 minutes to run the shorter trails and longer to run the longer ones. Then the lights automatically shut off. We'd been running for about two months when we started seeing the same man hanging around the parking lot every time we got there. He was a thin man, 25 to 30 years old, always dressed in sports clothes, but never actually running. He never really looked you in the eye either. We speculated that he could be homeless camping nearby because he was constantly there. We got used to seeing him sitting somewhere close by, silently and always on his own. We felt sorry for him. He never seemed to talk to anyone or interact at all, but there was something about him that made us hesitate to talk to him or ask if he was okay. Can't pinpoint exactly what it was, but something wasn't completely right with him. One evening, Hannah didn't make our run, so I decided to go on my own. I arrived at the parking lot, my car being the only car there. I did some stretching, turned on the lights, and set off on the five kilometer trail. I hadn't seen the thin, silent man when I started my run. Perhaps it was getting too cold to sit there now that it was autumn, dark, and getting closer to the freezing point. He must have been there though, somewhere in the shadows, because I got to the top of the first steep hill and could hear heavy breathing somewhere behind me. I look over my shoulder and I see him. He's running like a man possessed, in regular shoes, not running shoes, with his arms moving in a really strange, stiff manner, as if he was made of metal. His hands like arrows, straight in an upward, inward angle, sort of like a sprinter, but more extreme, moving like a robot. For the first time, he looked me straight in the eyes, and it was the eyes of a predatory animal and it made my heart freeze. He had never done anything to harm me or anyone else as far as I knew, but the look in his eyes alone was enough to let me know I was facing a serious, serious threat. I started running faster, trying to create distance between us, and I could hear his heavy breathing getting even more strained. I ran like my life depended on it, adrenaline pumping through my body and giving me new strength. I tore off my necklace and threw it on the ground thinking, I must leave some trace if he takes me. Something must be left behind. I tried screaming, hoping that someone would be close enough to hear me, but I couldn't scream and keep up the pace at the same time. Why is he doing this? What does he want? Who is he? I started to feel my lungs burn. Then I thought of my 15-month-old daughter and ran until I could taste blood in my mouth. He was still behind me, maybe a hundred meters. I figured that if I tripped and fell, ran out of energy, or fumbled with car keys once reaching the parking lot, then I would be screwed. So once I reached a sharp turn on the trail, I went off trail and ran straight into the dark woods. I ran only a short distance, then laid down flat on my stomach, my hands searching for a rock to defend myself with if he found me. I realized that I was wearing bright running clothes with reflectors and neon coloring. I had never felt so visible in the dark before. I could hear him reach the turn and thank God he kept running. I started slowly and as silently as possible to move further into the darkness. My heart sank again as soon as I heard his rapid footsteps closing in from the trail. He had realized that I must have gone off trail once he saw that there was no sign of me ahead. He stopped and I stopped. I could imagine him listening for any sounds. I held my breath and begged a god I don't believe in to make him go away. After a while, I heard him say something in a language I didn't recognize and walk off. I didn't move. I feared that he would wait for me by my car and I realized I had to get off the trail and onto the main road and stop someone. I couldn't go back to the parking lot. I started to make my way further into the woods knowing that I would eventually end up on the last part of the long trail and close to the main road. The lights of the trail suddenly shut off. That made me calmer at first. The dark was a comfort and protection. But then, after only a few moments, it switched on again. This could mean that another person had just started their run, and soon I would have someone there to help me, or that he was out there looking for me, or getting ready to prey on another lonely runner. I decided against waiting to find out and continued my way towards the main road. It was dark and I fell multiple times, my clothes getting wet from the damp vegetation, and I started to get cold. After what felt like a lifetime, I could see the 10 kilometer trail ahead and knew that I was close to the main road. Soon I could hear the traffic. 
Once I made it to the main road, I must have looked like I had been in a terrible accident. Blood from my several small cuts from falling, my clothes dirty, and my face, I assume, petrified. My bright runner shirt soon attracted the attention of a passing car. My waving and desperate shouting made it stop. The driver, a 40-ish man with his two kids in the back seat, spent the next 10 minutes or so trying to make sense of what I said between the sobbing and the crying. He asked if I wanted to lift back to the parking lot and I told him no, please take me home instead. At home, my husband insisted on going back to the parking lot to retrieve the car and calling the police. And report what, I asked. No crime had been committed. I just knew that he was out there to get me. My husband went back for the car. The driver's seat window was smashed in and my phone was gone. So was the photo of my daughter I had hanging from the mirror. I don't know what he was trying to do or why he had chased me the way he did, but the look in his eyes, there was no doubt he had bad intentions. Creepy forest trail man, let's never meet again. I haven't told many people this story, but here it goes. I was training for a Spartan race back in 2019. It was roughly 9 a.m. on Sunday morning. It was a beautiful, sunny morning in early July. I run on a heavily wooded trail where very few people would go, certainly not casual walkers. So that's where I was when I crested a hill and immediately got flooded with goosebumps and the hairs on the back of my neck jumping when I see what I thought was a mannequin like you'd see in a clothing store hanging from a rope in the tree about 10 to 15 feet off the trail. My first instinct was that someone was playing a prank. I stopped, moved closer, and it dawned on me. This wasn't a mannequin and it was no prank. I remember saying out loud, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit, over and over, and then why would they, why would they? I don't carry a phone when I run, so all I could think to do was run back to the truck where my phone was. Tears in my eyes, I ran. I forgot that there was a fire station right beside the parking lot, so I ran straight to one of the firemen who was mowing the lawn at the time, waving my arms and hysterically telling them I found a body. He brought me into the department where about five or six firefighters were on duty and I explained everything to them. So I left and sat at a picnic table where my truck was parked and tried to process what just happened and collect myself. Then my phone rings. Hi, it's officer so-and-so from the police department. We can't find the body. We're sending a car and you need to show us. Shit. I gotta go back. So I did. With like 10 cops and firefighters and paramedics all trudging through the woods in full gear. At this point, I actually started questioning myself and what I saw. Like what if I somehow was wrong about what I saw? Anyway, they kept me far back as they didn't want me to see the body again. And sure enough, the lead person arrived and they wouldn't let me go any further. The cops did a report with me, and then I went home. I later found out it was a 15-year-old high school boy who had hurt himself. About six to eight months later, a small commemorative plaque was installed on the tree, and the branch he used was cut down. Sad story for sure. So yes, running through the woods and seeing a pale white body hanging from a rope in a tree was my spookiest moment, not just on trail, but ever. A few years ago, I did a solo fast packing trip in the Sierras. I was doing long days and ending right before nightfall. I had just finished crossing over a mountain pass and decided to stop for the day. I wasn't near any great camping area, so I ended up randomly walking off the trail for a bit and finding a spot on the ground to set up camp. Right before dark, I see a bearded guy walking through the woods toward me. It caught me off guard because I was in a location where there shouldn't be many other hikers. He said he had just got done fishing and asked if he could set his tent up next to mine. I couldn't really say no, so I agreed. He started making small talk with me, but something seemed off about him. I decided to get in my bivy and started to go to sleep. That's when he woke me up. He came over and kneeled down a few inches from me and whispered, You know, I think we're going to die tonight. I couldn't really believe what he just said. Then he went on, You know, it's the blood moon. Jesus is going to take us home tonight, both you and me. At this point, I'm scared. I'm miles from help with no cell reception. I then replied with a lame joke to get him to back off. I hope not. I still have a lot of miles to hike. He then said, Well, you sleep tight. 
By the way, my name is Spirit. Then he went into his tent and closed the door. The rest of the night I stayed awake. I took a tent stake and held it in my hand. A few times he got out of his tent, looked around, then went back in. Once I noticed he was asleep, I packed up all my stuff and literally ran down the trail in the pitch dark until I was miles away. In January, I was running at night along a river trail. I look over and see someone in the river. They're screaming for help. No one else is around. I decided to run downstream of them and get to the riverbank. I found a decent sized branch along the bank, grabbed it and threw it towards them. It was a terrible throw, so I decided against my better judgment to try and swim the branch out to him. Mind you, it's 35 degrees outside and the river is 45 degrees. Anyway, I swam the branch out to him, but when I was about six feet away, he slips under the water, never to be seen again. He drowned before my eyes, and there was nothing I could do about it. It was a nightmarish experience I still play through my head time to time. Last spring, I was on the road for work and staying at a hotel with a nice long community trail nearby. It didn't have any lights for the most part. No big deal, I had a headlamp. I set out around 3.45 a.m. on a warm morning and made it about four kilometers down the trail where there were some dips in the terrain with cooler air and fog. On my way up from one of the dips, I saw what looked like a park bench and another object about the same height as the bench on the other side of the trail. I don't wear my glasses when I run, so I couldn't make out what the other object was. As I crested the hill and started to approach, I realized that the object was a person. A young woman with dark hair, shorts, and a crop top. Normally I try to avoid blinding people with my headlamp, but I was so surprised I shined the light right on her as I passed. No reaction. It's basically pitch black at this point aside from my light. Had this woman been sitting or slumped I may have stopped and asked if she was okay. But her kneeling position seemed so deliberate and I was incredibly unsettled and just continued. I found myself looking back for the rest of the run. And just in case, I wound up running an extra 6 kilometers longer than planned just to avoid going back that way. I think about that now whenever I go through a park early in the morning and it still gives me the creeps. There was one time a few years ago I was running on a trail I really liked. It's usually fairly busy, but I tend to run after work, so it was just me that evening. I was just finishing up. The dusk was turning to dark around me. I was coming out of the woods into some small local farm fields that the path runs between. I was about halfway through those fields with my attention drifting, when ahead of me, just far enough that I could barely notice it in the dim half night where everything is cast in shades of gray and black, this one particular patch of darkness appeared. This trail that I was on wasn't particularly remote. There's no section of it maybe more than a quarter mile from a house or a well-traveled road. So even though I was a little spooked, I figured my eyes were playing tricks on me because it was too small to be a deer, but too large to be any kind of a local critters around here. Just then I saw its head swing around. I caught the briefest flash of its eyes glowing at me and I realized it wasn't just a trick of my eyes. Something was there in the dark. Was it a dog? It seemed to stand on four legs, yet it was too big to be anything except maybe the largest of dog breeds at the peak of their size. It was just me and this animal in the empty field. No friendly dog owner in sight. Too gaunt to be a bear either. Not that there had ever been a sighting as far as I was aware. A moment later, it loped off across the fields. Which was actually scarier because it didn't bolt off like a fellow creature startled by a stranger. Instead, it had the gait of an animal that had never been troubled by the fear of being hunted. I'll never know for sure what I saw that night. I never got a closer look at it. In fact, I never saw another animal on that trail. I moved away a couple years later. What is up trail goblins? Thanks so much for watching the video and if you have any of your own creepy running horror stories make sure to leave them in the comments below. Also make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you so much. Bye bye.